Well, hey there. This is Dr. Angela, the author incubator, and I am joined today by my guest, author Callie Cummings. Callie is the author of The Bold Maneuver, The Working Woman's Playbook to Getting Ahead, Going Further, and Achieving Greater Success. Kelly, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So this is a bold title for a bold book. So tell us about The Bold Maneuver. Why'd you write this book? What's it about? Who is it for? Give us the lowdown. <laughs> the Bold Maneuver is for the working woman, the professional woman, who is in a male-dominant um, workforce. Uh, maybe she doesn't feel like she fits in. Maybe she's in a culture environment that she feels like an underdog in. And she's at a junior to mid-level leadership position, and she just can't figure out how mm. to break through that leadership ceiling, become an influencer, and make the changes that she really knows is needed in that organization um, because she's coming up with all of these obstacles and these frustrations. The Bold Maneuver is the playbook. It is a playbook, play-by-play. Play, gives you six plays to really confronting those, those frustrations, um, those obstacles. Um, to become the influencer and the change maker. So do you think it's different for women? Do you think there are different plays that women would need to run, especially a woman in a male-dominated uh, job, career? While this is written for women, I don't think that these necessarily are gender-specific to women. I think men could still definitely take this and become better leaders and better influences by, influencers by it. I think it depends on personality type, which play you play, okay. how you play it, and why you play it. Um, the, I'll tell you, the first two plays, the one-on-one, -on -one is learning about personalities and personality psychology. Um, and the second play feeds right into the first play, and that's called The Oprah. And that is winning influence um, and creating buy-in. So you have to know the one-on-one, -on -one, play the one-on-one, -on -one, to be able to play the Oprah and create that influence. But that is not gender-specific. Both men and women have to do that. But how they do it and why they do it is going to be for different reasons. So how did you figure all this out? Why the bold maneuver? And how did you come up with these plays? So... <laughs> I come from a background in leadership theory, so my master's degree is in global leadership and sustainable development. But what do you do when you're 21 with a master's degree in global leadership? Like, going to go be the president? You go to Davos <laughs> and you just say, hey, I'm taking over the World Economic Forum. Not possible. Not possible. So um, I ended up joining the military um, and became a leader in the armed forces. So um, I became a young army officer. Um, I joined up. I was working for a hedge fund in New York City. When I went to the Times Square, also male dominated, all male, also male dominated, and um, ended up becoming an army engineer, which I thought I was going to start building things, you know. And this was when Iraq and Afghanistan was going on, and um, I ended up becoming a combat engineer officer, which meant that I was going to be blowing stuff up and not building oh. stuff. And I became oh. one of the uh, one of the first in a group of women to lead ground combat troops in an all male force. Um, still something that is very debated and um, people don't think is happening. It has already happened. I'm one of those examples. Um, but it was, you know, I had to take that leadership theory from education and implement it. And there were struggles. Obviously, I had an all-male unit um, that I was leading and how to communicate effectively, how to create the buy-in to get them to do what they needed to do for themselves, for the team, for the unit. Um, and then leaving there and continuing work in both high tech and Department of Defense, again, male dominant fields, <laughs> and taking all those lessons, uh, trials and errors, um, and the leadership theory and practice and putting all that together in this playbook. So a lot of your experience happened in your 20s, and the 20s are a great decade for making mistakes. What do you think are some of the biggest mistakes that you made that help you be able to write this? Uh, write this book and really lead the bold maneuver movement. I walked away when mm -hmm. I was struggling. Um, you come, you know, I think as women, we often come with these frustrations and these struggles and we deal with them for so long. For me, it was probably a year and a half worth of struggling. And I just decided, you know what, I, I could benefit, I, I could be of more use somewhere else. Um, and when you change careers, you know, I, I loved my, I loved what I was doing. Um, I just didn't like my job or I didn't like the fact that I, wasn't doing more, making a bigger difference. Um, but what I did was I set myself back because I couldn't, I, I didn't have the playbook, I didn't have the plays to figure out how to solve the problems that were in front of me. 
Um, because had I, had I done this myself and had I played the playbook, had I known what I know now in my 30s and my 20s, um, I would have been at a much larger, uh, much um, higher level, much quicker. Um, and unfortunately, I, I walked away, and that's what I'm trying to prevent other women from doing. They love their careers. They just don't feel like they fit into the culture or to the environment, or they have, they're struggling with their colleagues and their bosses, and they end up walking away when it could be a great career path for them and a great future for them. I think so often when I was in that position, I, I spent a lot of time in the software world, which again is male, male dominated. <laughs> and I just wanted to be seen. I wanted to be like picked out and protected. I wanted someone to say like, oh, she's so smart. Let me make this safe for her to do this. And really, I, I felt most of the time like I was so on my own, like, I have to figure this out on my own. It's which a different is culture. It's a different culture. So, what the reason I made this a playbook, um, and I think it's different from a lot of the other books out there in professional women, is um, I talk about the game. You know, when you're in male dominant workforces, I mean, to be honest, we still live in a very male dominant world. Male leaders around us, you know, everywhere, and not just in our organizations, but organizations that we're involved in. Um, and, and guys are just biologically more competitive. So, exactly. They, so, in, in the book, the opponent is not men. The opponent is just the real world. We, you know, and um, I, I don't talk about men as the enemy. It's just a difference in personalities. It's not a gender issue. It's a personalities issue. And that's why personality psychology is the first play. Um, but what... What this playbook really, the reason I made it the playbook was that game, that because the gender dominance is male in a lot of these organizations, men are typically more competitive, and we don't realize it as women. We go in, we want to make a difference, and we want to make an impact, and, and we don't know how to do that. We We're like, why wouldn't we all collaborate? And that is a frustration that just weighs on us. We have this chip on our shoulder because we don't, we feel like we're not seen, we're not heard. Um, and we don't understand that everybody around us is playing a game, not necessarily for themselves, but just in general. They're competitive. And we, we sometimes can, some personalities can tend to take that as an offense, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not collaborative. But once we understand that everybody is playing and then we jump into the game and we're active in it. It's Whether you know it or not, like you're at the table, you're playing, you've been dealt in, look at your cards. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. such a weight that's lifted off of you because then not only do you know that you're in a game set, like in a game setting, but you can have fun. So moving up the leadership ladder, moving up the corporate ladder, breaking through whatever ceiling is up there be becomes more fun and less of a stressor. Mm -hmm. And so you're less likely to walk away like I did and make the mistake of walking away from a career that could potentially just be a great future for you. Yeah. I feel like I always wanted a big sister or somebody who could like tell me what was actually happening. <laughs> and I feel like for so many people, they're going to want to follow up with you, learn more and be like, Hey, can you tell me what's happening? Cause I cannot read this situation. How do people find you? So feel free to contact me info at the bold maneuver.com. Um, and if you uh, say that you watch this or, you know, you just want to put a free book in the subject line, I will send you a free copy of The Bold Maneuver, The Working Woman's Playbook. We all need to go out there, play the game, and this playbook will definitely get you to, the, to where you want to be. I love it. Fantastic. Well, Callie Cummings is the author of The Bold Maneuver, The Working Woman's Playbook to Getting Ahead, Going Further, and Achieving Greater Success. Thank you so much for spending Thank some you. time with me today.